Mr. Speaker, it's three minutes past twelve. If somebody phones, if somebody phones nine 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 now because they have chest pains and fear it might be a heart attack, when would the Prime Minister expect an ambulance to arrive? Yeah. Oh. Mr Speaker, it's absolutely right that people can rely on the emergency services when they need them, and that's why we are rapidly implementing measures to improve the delivery of ambulance times and, indeed, urgent and emergency care. But I'd say to the honourable gentleman, if he cares about ensuring that patients get access to life-saving emergency care when they need it, why won't he support our minimum safety legislation? Mr Speaker, the Prime Minister can deflect all he likes, but for the person for the person suffering from chest pains, the clock started ticking straight away. Every minute counts. That's why the government says an ambulance should be there in 18 minutes. In that case it would mean just about 20 past 12. If our heart attack victim had called for an ambulance in Peterborough at 12.03, it would not arrive until 10 past 2. These are our constituents waiting for ambulances I am talking about. If they were in Northampton, it would not arrive until 20 past 2. If they were in Plymouth, it would not arrive until 20 to 3. That is why someone who fears a heart attack waiting more than two and a half hours for an ambulance. Not the worst case scenario, just the average wait. Yep. By one o'clock, our heart attack victim is in a bad way. Sweaty, dizzy, chest tightening. This is a heart attack and they're shouting, this is your constituent. By that time, they should be getting treatment. But an hour after they've called 999, they're still lying there, waiting, listening to the clock tick. How does he think they feel knowing an ambulance could be still hours away? Yeah. Well, Mr Speaker, the specific and practical things we are doing to improve ambulance times are clear. We are investing more in urgent and emergency care to create more bed capacity. We are ensuring that the flow of patients through emergency care is faster than it ever has been. We are discharging people at a record rate out of hospitals to ease the constraints that they are facing. And we are reducing the call-out rates by moving people out of ambulance stacks and being dealt with in a community. Now, these are all very practical steps that will make a difference in the short term. But I ask him again and again, and we know why. The reason that he is not putting patients first when it comes to ambulance waiting times is because he is simply in the pockets of his union paymaster. Mr Speaker, over the 40 minutes or so that these sessions tend to last, 700 people will call an ambulance. Two will be reporting a heart attack. Four will be reporting a stroke. But instead of the rapid help they need, many will wait and wait and wait. So if he won't answer any questions, will he at least apologise for the lethal chaos under his watch? Mr Speaker, Mr Speaker, Mr Speaker, he he asks about the minimum safety levels. We we will deliver them as soon as we can pass them. Why won't he vote for them, first of all? But Mr Speaker, Mr Speaker, we are we are delivering on the people's priorities. As we've seen this week, the honourable gentleman will just say anything if the politics suits him. It's as simple as that. He will break promises left, right and centre. He promised to nationalise public services. He promised to have a second referendum. He promised to defend the mass migration of the EU. And now, if we are going to deliver for the British people, people need to have strong convictions. But when it comes to the honourable gentleman, he isn't just for the free movement of people. He's also got the free movement of principles. Yeah.